Hello and welcome to another Focus On video. This time we're going to talk about sky selections, which have become much simpler since Photoshop and Lightroom introduced their new automatic sky selections and masks. And for many images, they are good enough. But sometimes they need improvement because they are not perfect and it's always good to check them closely before you do many adjustments using those masks. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can improve them using a few simple techniques. So yeah, let's have a look. As an example, we want to look at this photo which I shot in Bali. And here's the final result. You see here, after blending the images, did some focus stacking and exposure blending, the image looks like this. And then I applied some settings to give it a bit more of a dreamy look. And also I enhanced the sky. To work on the sky in this image, let's just start here with the base and try to create a sky selection. For this, you just go over here to select and then sky in Photoshop. And if you have Lightroom, you'll also find in the masking panel a sky selection. So what this will do, it will analyze the image and make a first guess about what the sky is in the image. Now, let's say we want to add some contrast. So we'll use a curves layer and the selection will now automatically be applied as a mask. If I now make changes, a first glance looks quite good, so obviously the skies changed by it. But the question now is, is everything of the sky changed and how good is the selection we cut? For this, let's have a look at the mask by just alt clicking on the mask. And now when we zoom in, we see that the selection is quite good, but also there are here around those trees and also behind the trees some grayish areas and here in those trees as well. If we go back to the image, you see this here is quite good because he actually recognized that this area here is sky behind the leaves, but it's not a full selection. And here between those branches, it also recognized this area as sky, but the selection is not a 100% selection. And that's because here we have some brighter tones in the sky. so. It's not 100%. Most of the time, what Photoshop does here and also Lightroom is what you want because having those gray areas also in the selection, so not just a harsh selection with black and white, makes the selection much more natural and many settings will look better. But sometimes it introduces artifacts if those areas should be a selection. So it's good to check it. And for example, here having this only gray, so not 100% selected is actually not what I want. I want to affect this area 100%. So it's always good to check the sky selection and see if it represents what you want to change or if you need to tweak it. And tweaking it is pretty simple. There are two techniques I want to show you. So the first one is if you have this mask here selected, can go to the select and mask panel. So if you're seeing this, this is the adjustment layer settings. You usually have another button up here, which brings you to the layer mask panel, which you can use to reduce the density of the mask. You can feather the mask non-destructively here. But what you can also do is you can click here on the select and mask, which brings up the mask refinement tool. And I usually switch to this view here where I have the red overlay showing me the areas that are black in the mask and the areas that are not red will be white in the mask. So as you can see here, this transition, there's a bit of red also here. I want to fix this, make this a little harder etched mask. What I can do is here on the left side, you see a few tools and this second brush here this is actually what you can use to refine the mask. Holding down Alt and the right mouse key, then pulling to the right and left, I can change its size. And up and down will change the hardness. So I usually put the hardness to zero and use such a medium size. And you see currently plus is selected, which means when I now paint here around those areas, which are not 100% selected, it will analyze only those areas over which I painted and then try to find additional sky portions or add to the mask. 
And around those trees here, there's actually quite a good contrast. So this works very well. Also down here, this area where we look to the areas behind the trees. When I paint over those, it will also improve the selection. And I can do this by going along the edges here. And usually I just do smaller strokes because my laptop is not that fast with this tool here. Now, for example, if I find that here an area needs to be removed from the selection, I can just hold down Alt. You see the plus changes to a minus and also up here I'm switching to the minus or you can just click here. But I prefer to just use the shortcut Alt and then I can draw here and Photoshop will add a bit of the selection. And let's say I'm okay with what I just did. Also, what I typically do, I set the feathering of the mask to 0.5. I click OK. And now when we click into the mask, you see this area looks much better, but also here it added a bit too much. This is where another tool comes in handy, which is Dodge and Burn. So now here I have black shades of gray and then white. And when I now use the Dodge tool, what I can do is up here in the range, I can set it to highlights. I start with an exposure of 20% and then here in those brighter areas where I still have some gray, I just dodge a bit and make those 100% white. And I can use the burn tool, which is directly beneath the dodge tool, set the range to the shadows, also change the exposure, maybe 30. And now I go over those areas here, which are already gray. And I can build up the effect here and remove this part from the selection. So this is very handy if you want to make your selection or mask more precise. So if you want to remove those grayish areas where Photoshop was a bit undecided, if it is sky or if it isn't, you can now work on those by using the dodge and the burn tool. And this is usually a process of going back and forth between the two tools. So going over the bright areas, making them white, then using the burn tool, darkening some of the darker areas. And I'll just focus here on the left side for now. And by this, you can see, I get a pretty good selection very quickly. And now if I get to an area where it's a little tricky, what I can do after using the dodge and burn, can also return again here to the Select and Mask tool and work a bit more on the selection by using this brush here. So in the end, those tools can be nicely combined to create a perfect sky selection. So you can spend as much time as you want here and in the end get exactly what you want selected for the sky. Just to mention one final thing, what you can also do is just go in with a brush, make it 100% hard, 100% black, and just fix such minor flaws, which are not at the edges of the selection. So just brushing over those, this also helps until you also see where Photoshop was very undecided. So it's always good to get in closely if you want really good results. If you're just working for the web, for Instagram, this is overkill certainly but if you also like to print your images large you'll want to have proper selections because when i now start to work on this image based on the selection i had a lot of contrast and then maybe reuse this selection for other settings which i want to do to the sky at some point when i have like 10 20 layers I zoom in, I might recognize, oh, there's a flaw and I have to go back and fix all the adjustments I've made. And that's a pain. So right in the beginning, make sure to create a proper selection. And also if you want to reuse it, just control click here on the mask, which will load the mask again as a selection. So after you fix the mask, if you have the mask perfect, just go to the channels and down here, you can click on this button, which creates another channel here which you see as alpha one you can give it a name call it sky selection and now later you can always come back to the channels if you need the sky selection 
control click on it and voila it's selected again then you can add another adjustment layer for example a color balance and make further adjustments to your sky so that's it i hope you found this video helpful and if you have further suggestions on how you work on the sky how you make better selections yeah just leave a comment let me know and then see you in the next video bye